Welcome back guys to my channel and to a new video. So before we start, uh, I'm gonna let you guys know that I haven't been recording in a long time, but I am, I do have more time um, because of reasons, you know, I think we all know why, but um, I have more time to do videos. So I'll be posting videos like this in like the next coming days. Uh, mostly Pokemon battles. I'll do. I'll try to do streams again. Make sure my hardware is fine and everything. So, the problem here would now be just you know, try and getting the editing done and just pushing it through. So, with that out of the way, let's get into this uh, battle. So right now, I was thinking of bringing because they have that you know dra the Dragapult right there, and that's probably the biggest threat as well as that Corviknight. So I thought maybe let's go with Trick Room. Trick Room seems to be the most uh, effective strategy. Uh, for me, that is. I've always been using Trick Room teams, always use Trick Room teams. Um, it's kind of like my bread and butter. That and doubles. So VG VGC 2020 is probably like m my shit. <laughs> but um, I don't have time to play too much. But we got videos, so, we got, so we're doing this. All right. So gosh, I love this fire stadium. So okay, they, yeah, they started with Dragapult and Corviknight. That's their lead. Both shinies, we know what that means. Um, I led Koparaja and Dusclops, so we're gonna go hard Trick Room right from the beginning. So what I want to do is probably Trick Room, I'm gonna Trick Room first. I think I can survive anything that they dish out, even if they double target me. So I'm gonna go and hit Play Rough, super effective on Dragapult. Hopefully, what's not a Sash. Uh, I was afraid it might actually f uh, Phantom Force and not be able to hit, but no, it goes to the Flamethrower. Doesn't do too much damage. I was a little scared though. Special defense on Koparaja is not that great. But I was able to tank it. I used Play Rough, knocked it out, first turn. I don't know what Corviknight was using because I actually outsped it, so something told me it was probably gonna do something tricky. So okay, so I went for revenge. That's okay. Um, body press I think would be a bit more damage. Um, so that's a that's a that's a misplay on their part. I was able to get sit up Trick Room. I don't know what's coming in next, but I, right now at this position, I'm pretty good with what I have. Copa Rush is definitely going to go down next turn, so I won't Dynamax. Usually I would Dynamax first turn, tank up some hits, but I really didn't want to go into into Misty Train because I have Will-O-Wisp on Dusclops, and I kind of want to burn whatever comes in next, or Corbinite, because it is physical, most likely. So we have Mimikyu, which is also good because Mimikyu I would want to burn, because usually it's Sword Dance. Um, Swords Dance into Shadow Sneak. So what I do here is I Will-O-Wisp the Mimikyu. We are in Trick Room, so I'll probably go first. I was half expecting them to Shadow Sneak my Koparaja, so it really didn't matter what I threw here. But um, I try to get as much damage on Mimikyu. Corviknight isn't a problem, so we're just gonna leave it there. So I just Will-O-Wisp and focused myself on the Mimikyu. Which is no problem, actually. Mimikyu is kind of scary at times. Because you don't know what they could be on. They could be anti-Trick Room. They can bring out um, Sword Stance. I don't know, there'll be like a, a Mold Breaker. This is rare, I've never seen this one before, but like Mold Breaker into Focus Sash. Um, they'll actually bring Focus Sash for Mold Breakers. That's probably one of the things. Oh, it's okay. So we saw that it has ins Assurance, the Corviknight, which is fine. Um, Drain Punch is a weird move, but I guess, I mean, I, I feel like you'd want to hit something else, but I guess you'd get a little bit of recovery. Doesn't matter. So Koparaja goes down. That's all right. We still have three more Pokemon in the back. We still have Trick Room up. I, w I went with Mantine on this one. It's I think it's kind of slow. I think it's slower than Mimikyu, but probably not on the Corviknight. But I thought that's much better than what I had with, with Whimsicott. So Mantine is actually very tanky on the, uh, on the special side. So I thought, let's, get, let's Dynamax. There isn't really anything I, I don't think Corviknight or Mimikyu could do to me, so I'll just I'll just Dynamax, and then go straight into Max Geyser. Um, I also could get rid of Trick Room to be the fastest thing on the field, but I thought maybe getting a bit more damage on the on the Mimikyu with uh, Nightshade might have been better. Just in case, because I'm not sure if I can KO it with Max Geyser. I'm not too sure. There might be some damage rolls, but um, but Dusclops will go first, so it's guaranteed that we'll, that we'll do some damage. So we just do Nightshade on Mimikyu and just focus ourselves on Mimikyu, even though it's it's probably not a threat anymore. It could it could still be a threat with Anti Trick Room, so I wanted to get rid of that. I possibly I could possibly actually let them Trick Room, if they had it, because 
Mantine has Swift Swim, and in the rain, it'll go double speed, which means that after Trick Room is um, over, I have the advantage. I have the speed advantage between between um, Mantine and Corviknight. But it's alright. I don't know what item they were running. They could have been running some Citrus Berry, probably. Actually, no. It would, it would have already propped. So I, don't, I wasn't sure what they were running. I half expected Corviknight at this point to maybe Iron Defense or start, you know, stacking with stats. But no, they're just going to straight into Brave Bird. And although that does a lot of damage, it's nothing I can't recover up. So they bring. Okay, they bring Surf Fetched. And now this is weird. I really thought they were gonna Dynamax. Also, another Shiny. So, full Shiny team. I don't know what to say. <laughs> so, they're gonna. They're probably gonna Dynamax the Surf Fetched. I always see them Dynamax the Surf Fetched because of critical hits. So, I thought, okay, I'll, plain, I'll Pain Split the Surf Fetched, get as much damage uh, done on the Surf Fetched, and just max Airstream the Surf Fetched. And then what we have to do is deal with Corviknight, which we've seen it has only Revenge. Assurance and Brave Bird, and I've we've seen that Dust Clubs can take it, and the um the Mantine is pretty tanky. So look at that critical hit, first impression, still didn't take out the Dust Clubs. That helps me a lot with Paint Split. I didn't really need it, but it helps out. Coronet used Assurance again. I think Brave Bird would have been a bit more damage, but I guess they don't want the recoil. And we max Airstream. Trick Room really doesn't matter at this time. I guess Trick Room is only beneficial for Dust Clubs to get off the first hit. That way, Mantine is, will always be close to last. If not last. So, I think Trick Room is still going on. And at this point, I thought, well, let's just Willow Wisp the Corviknight, because if Trick Room runs out, I don't want it taking out my Dust Clubs for any reason, and then getting a critical hit on Mantine, whose defense isn't all that strong once, um, <laughs> once uh, once they're off of Dynamax, but they quit, they forfeited, so that was good. So that was good. We won by we won by forfeit. So yeah, so that's a, that's the power of the Trick Room. That's Koparaja and Dust Clops. I think I've run Koparaja and Dust Clops before, but this is um, this isn't a different team. This is a different team. They're going to be part of a next team I'm thinking of making. So be on the lookout for that video. Um, if you want to look at anything else I'll be working on during the week, I'll join Discord. The, uh, the link is down below. Also, if you want to keep up with the videos coming out, uh, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Um, let me know what do you think about this new layout. Because I'm doing a voiceover for these for these videos. I haven't really done a voiceover in a long time. But uh, let me know how it, you know how it sounds. If you guys want anything else or or something similar to it, and uh, we'll go from there. So. Going into our second battle, actually you can see my wins right there. I have three wins and two losses. So, so for a total of five battles. So this is pretty fresh. I've been using this team exclusively for doubles this season. This March season. And we have a new challenger. So let's see, it's what we had on our team. Uh, they had a lot of fairy. They had Lapras, which isn't a fairy, but it's still threatening. They had Sylveon, Primarina, and Gardevoir. So there was a lot of fairy. Um, I was hesitant in bringing in my Obstagoon, except it was Choice Scarf. And I feel like Choice Scarf Obstagoon is a lot of damage, so I might have had it in the back, just in case. It, is, it does have threatening powers. It has threatening immediate powers. It's, um... I forget what its ability was, but it's not Guts. So it's not Guts, it's not guts boosted. So Burning does affect us. So the lead here is Dust Clops, Mantine, and then I put in Koparaja in case they bring Trick Room. Or sorry, in case they um they don't see the Trick Room coming, I switch out my Mantine. And then I go into Koparaja. Because I'm half expecting them to lead with their Incineroar. Almost everyone leads with their Incineroar. So I thought, okay, we'll do um, Mantine, we'll do Dusclops, and then afterwards, if I see that they bring their Incineroar, and you see the Mantine, uh, they probably won't switch it in. So I'll just switch out the Mantine, go set up Trick Room, and then I'll come in with Koparaja with almost a little bit of damage, then first turn Dynamax, and then Rex Bulls. So that was the plan. That was the plan. So we have a Gardevoir and Toxtricity lead. So I, 
I was expecting them to boom burst or maybe uh, overdrive to get a throat spray out. So I'm safe here. I feel like I can Dynamax. There isn't really any threat on Koparaja going in. So I thought I could safely um, switch in. Also, Mantine is very weak to, four times weak to Electric. So I was expecting to target Mantine. Koparaja would survive that. And then I would have Trick Room for first turn, um, first turn damage. So yeah, for Koparaja, if I haven't said it already, is a sure force life orb set with max HP, max attack, uh, brave nature with zero speed. So it has zero speed to be like the fat, the slowest thing on the field, except for Dusclops. I think Dusclops is a little bit slower, just in case. So I, I took that in consideration. So yeah, Overdrive actually hits both, but it's still not too much damage. So yeah, the, you can see there they expected for Mantine to attack, so they set up a light screen. And since it's not Prankster, um, we have the advantage in Trick Room. Now, I thought, okay, physical, right? Cooperation does still have a lot of damage. Oh, sorry, health. So I feel like there's nothing really that can take us out at this point, even if they Dynamax. So I half expected maybe for Gardevoir to have a super effective move on me. But I thought, you know what, let's just go for it. So I went Max Quake into the tox Toxtricity. That is probably the most threatening thing right now. And for Dusclops, I thought of maybe... Mm. That maybe, I forget what, what I've clicked, but um, honestly, <laughs> I just forgot what I clicked. But um, yeah, so we're gonna go with Koparaja definitely unfortunately we don't know what items they have so it could be throat spray well actually it wasn't throat spray we'd have seen it with the overdrive what did they say we paint split we get that health back from Gardevoir that has a little bit of uh, a little bit of damage that way if it does have like a focus sash or anything like that we um we get rid of it but the focus sash ended up being on toxicity I was not expecting that I was not expecting that so Max Quake does raise our special defense, so we are protected against um, any attacks coming afterwards under Trick Room. So Gardevoir doesn't do that much damage, and Toxtricity doesn't do that much damage either. So we see they're setting up Light Screen, so they're just support Gardevoir at this point. We see Toxtricity goes for a Nuzzle, trying to paralyze me, um, trying to slow me down basically. Um, the bad thing about this is that now Koparaja is the fastest, or the, the slowest, Mon on the field, which means they go first, but also it's also a gamble whether I actually move or not. So at this point, I'm like, all right, let's get rid of the, let's get rid of the toxicity, but I have to target the Gardevoir and get rid of that one too. So we can just max steel spike, hoping that enough damage, even after reflect, will will, will take out the Gardevoir, which it does, which is super good because I also boost my defense. So now my Dusclops is plus one in defense and plus one in special defense. So it's pretty tanky at this point. It's pretty tanky. Paint Split, Will-O-Wisp, and Nightshade should probably do quick work of whatever comes in next. And we still have, I think, three turns of Trick Room, which isn't half bad. Copraja is close to actually a little less than half damage, and it's paralyzed. So that sucks, but I think we can still make it through. Now in the back, I have Mantine, and I do have uh, my um, Whimsicott, just in case. So we see Primarina and Lapras. So now I definitely know that we are, sorry, the opponent's gonna G-Max the Lapras. It's gonna be G-Max Lapras. They know they can't stack the Aurora Veil, so there's no point in going in Aurora Veil. So they'll probably go Max Geyser and try to do as much damage. You probably wanna get rid of Koparaja. I actually have the uh, Power Whip, so I'll just Max Overgrow on Primarina. I think that's the most threatening damage. Your defense isn't that strong. And I have specials in the back, so I have to do as much damage as I can on the Primarina. So that's my only that's my only option right now, right now at this point. Except I am paralyzed, so that's a bit of a gamble right there. So they are G-Max, like I said. So yeah, Max Overgrow onto the Primarina. I was actually expecting to knock it out, but it's fairly tanky. Even even on um even on, on, well it's not Sheer Force, Sheer Force actually doesn't do any damage here. But if I was probably Sheer Force Power Whip, that might have actually done, knocked it out. Except I didn't want to go for like, I, well I couldn't go because I was Dynamax. But even if I could go, the accuracy on Power Whip was probably not enough. So I went for Nightshade trying to take out the Primarina. It had a Citrus Berry 
healed up and got right out of range. So we see Lapras actually going for Dusclops. Because of those two defenses, or one boost in special defense, we take even less damage. So Rain is now set up. Grassy Terrain is now set up. So we take less damage from ground type moves. Actually from Earthquake. Water Absorb Lapras. Okay. That's good to see. That way we can use our Koparaja. Sorry, our Mantine effectively. I think we still have one more true one more turn of Trick Room. At this point I'll have Dusclops paint split the Lapras. And Koparaja will have to do some damage. Hopefully it doesn't get paralyzed. And we just take out take out the, the Primarina right here and right then. So Player of has accuracy drop, power up has accuracy drop, so Iron Head is the only one that's accurate. Hopefully behind Reflect it does do enough damage. So we paint we paint split the Lapras and just go for the kill on Primarina. Which we do, which is enough. So Primarina's down. All they have is Lapras left. G Max Lapras though. Depending on if they want to stay in or not, sorry, depending on whether they want to drive this battle out, they might have gone for the um, Aurora Veil, because as soon as the clay runs out, the Reflect and Light Screener runs out, they can still have the Aurora Veil you know, continue on, because it's a different. it was activated on different turns, so it kind of extends itself a bit more, which is cool, but it doesn't have, it doesn't have Light Clay, so I don't know, it wouldn't extend too much, but we're getting heals, which is good. Um, Trick Room is still active, I believe. Power Up, yeah, Power Up is my only option at this point, since they can't flinch or anything. I didn't want to go for the, but I didn't want to go for the accuracy and miss. So I went for Iron Head, which is Stab, which is, I think, the better move. And just go Nightshade on the Lapras. So, yeah, we weren't able to take it out. Actually, Trick Room is over then. I wasn't paying attention. Trick Room is over, so okay, we lost our Koparaja, which is fine. We Paint Split. We heal up. Which is fine. We get a little bit more heals, and they'll also get a bit more heals. But that's fine. We're at 100%. They're still in G-Max, and Lapras has a lot of HP. So I go into Mantine, and I know I can't use any Water-type moves, so I can't use uh, Hydro Pump because it'll just water absorb, but I have rain on, which means my hurricane will actually hit 100% of the time. I just have to outspeed. So I go for hurricane, hopefully, hopefully get the confusion on the Lapras. The Lapras is right now mm, a bit threatening. If it uses Ice Beam or anything like that. It could use Freeze Dry. If it runs Freeze Dry, my, my main thing is, is screwed. But we go first, we outspeed, we also Swift Swim. It goes for Thunder. Okay. Free Strike might have been a little bit better, I think. Thunder it does have 100% accuracy and rain. I get paralyzed though, which is not the end of the world. And I go Will this. I, I know I could have probably gone for Nightshade here and just ended the game, but I didn't want to take any chances. Because I knew it was either I'm gonna go for Mantine or Dusk Clubs. Whoever whoever survives is gonna be able to take it out next turn. So I just you know, I was just playing around at this point. So I go for Hurricane again, I'm paralyzed, so that kind of cancels out the Swift Swim. And then I go for Nightshade. And the opponent cancels. And forfeits. So that's two, that's two forfeits with this team. Two forfeits. I still have three Pokemon left, so that's pretty good. So the team is doing really well. The Trick Room part of it is, is doing really well. Koparaja and Dusclops are putting in some serious work. So those were the two battles, I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.